Welcome back to the course mechanics of solids. So, today in this particular lecture, uh, we will be solving some typical problems using Castiglione's theorem. Already Castiglione's theorem we have covered a little bit earlier and after that we solved uh, several things uh, using I mean considering unstability, uh, uh, unstable equilibrium or the instability in the column buckling right. So, that is thing we have already covered in the last lecture. Now, this lecture uh, I am I am thinking that I will I will give more some more numerical examples using Castiglione's theorem so that you will you will understand the powerful technique okay of Castiglione's theorem okay. So, let us solve this kind of indeterminate structure using Castiglione's theorem. What is that? So, I am applying one force P okay. this is A, this is B, total span of the beam is say L. Our objective is to find out, find reactions at C, where this is your A, this is your B point, this is your C. This is completely indeterminate structure. You cannot solve. You cannot solve this kind of problem using only statical equilibrium equations, as you know. And this problem was solved by the previously. It was solved by using your method of superposition, and there you know the solution, right? And let's see whether we can get the same solution using Castiglione's theorem or not. Okay. So. If I remove this support C and if I replace the support reactions and replace with the support reactions, then how it will look like? The beam is beam will be a cantilever beam which is carrying a load P here and the support reactions will be something like R C and say M C. These two are not known to me, these two are unknown. But as we know from our support condition, that is fixed support will provide one force as well as one moment, right. Fine, as we know from our earlier discussion. Now, now this is this is very simple to solve by using Castiglione's theorem, right. So, we are considering two sections to define the whole problem. So, one section is here. So, this is section 1 1 say and this is section 2 2. Okay. Now, if I want to solve this beam for section 1 1, I can draw the free body diagram like this R C M C and here you have M B. This is the length say L minus x. Okay. So, for that you can calculate M B equal to R C into L minus x minus M C. Fine. No problem, up to this no problem. Then for section 2 2, What we are doing? This is the section 2 2. You have M B. This length is L minus x. This end you are having R C M C moment and the force here, right? Say P. Okay. This is your say. Okay. So, for that I can get the expression for M B equal to R C into L minus x minus P into L minus x minus B minus M C. This is the expression for M B and as we discussed in the previous lectures that we will not be considering the contribution of shear, shear force okay, in the deflection calculation because that is negligible 
I mean the strain energy computed based on shear force will be negligible as compared to the strain energy coming from the bending moment that already we have discussed. Okay. So, we are neglecting that part. So, this is the expression for bending moment. Now, if you want to find out delta C that means the vertical deflection at point C. that is the vertical deflection at point C, fine. So, that will be simply given by as we know M B by E i, okay, del M B del R C because some, some concentrated force is acting there. So, we can, we can take the partial derivative of the strain energy with respect to that force R C and that will give me the deflection. So, del M B del R C into d x. So, now we can write here 1 by E i because E i is constant for the whole beam A 2 L okay, R C into L minus x minus M C that is coming from section 1 1. Okay into L minus x into d x del M B del R C for section 1 1 is L minus x that you can check from the expression of M B fine plus 1 by E i 0 to A. Now, this is this is coming from section 2 2 R C into L minus x minus p into L minus x minus b that is given here minus m c and del m b del r c is simply L minus x into d x fine. So, this can be further written as 1 by E i a to L R C L minus x whole square minus M C into L minus x into d x plus 1 by E i 0 to A R C into L minus x whole square minus p into L minus x minus b into L minus x minus m c into L minus x into d x. Now, you do the integration. If you do the integration, basically you will be getting the expression like that del c delta c equal to, if you do this integration, you will be getting delta C equal to minus 1 by E i P B cube by 6 minus R C L cube by 3 plus P L cube by 3 minus P B L square by 2 plus m c l square by 2. Okay, got it. Now, what is the actual value of delta c at point c? It is simply 0 because that is a thick support. In the physical problem, your delta c because we are taking out the support and we are providing, we are replacing the support with our support reactions that is fine. We have got delta c, but ultimately or eventually your sub I mean support condition will give you the restriction right delta c must be 0 right. If you put this 0 then basically if you put this 0 then basically you will be getting one equation like this m c l square by 2 minus r c l cube by 3 
equal to p into b l square by 2 minus l q by 3 minus b q by 6 say equation 1 fine. So, you have got this equation by putting delta c equal to 0. Now, what we can find out similarly, I can find out phi c. What is phi c? That is the rotation at point c. Now, how we can find out? We can find out the rotation at point c by taking the partial derivative of the strain energy with respect to the moment which is applied at point c. And already some moment is applied that is m c already is applied at point c. Therefore, I need not to consider any fictitious or some, some uh, different kind of moment right. So, already that moment is applied. So, I can simply write down m b by e i okay, del m b del m c d x that gives me the rotation at point c. Now, if you write down this this expression, this equation, then basically you will be getting a very similar expression like your deflection delta c. So, basically you will be getting phi c equal to 1 by E i a to l r c into l minus x minus m c okay. and del m b del m c if you look at for section 1 1 that will give you minus 1 into d x plus that is for section 2 2 0 to a r c into l minus x minus p into l minus x minus b minus m c and del m b del m c for section 2 2 is again minus 1 d x. So, if you perform this integration you will be getting phi c equal to one by E i m c into L minus R c into L square by 2 minus P B L plus P L square by 2 plus P B square by 2. That is the expression of your rotation at point C. Now, what is the actual value of the rotation at point C? Simply 0 because that is the fixed support and you cannot get any rotation, right. So, again this must be 0. So, if you put that equal to 0, then you will be getting another equation which will be looking like, which will be very similar to this that will be m c l minus r c l square by 2 equal to p into b l minus l square by 2 minus b square by 2. Same question. Okay. So, you have got two equations by putting delta c equal to 0 and phi c equal to 0. Now, if you solve this these two equations, then you will be getting r c equal to 12 into p by l cube b cube by 6 plus l cube by 12 minus b square l by 4, right. You will be getting from the solution of these two equations. R c is given by this. So, this can be further simplified as twelve p 
by L q instead of B I can write L minus A whole cube by 6 plus minus this B square L I can write L minus A whole square into L by 4 plus L cube by 12. So, I am just removing B from here in this expression and I can write like this and ultimately I will be getting R C equal to P A square. If you do further simplification, you will get 3 L minus twice A by Can you recognize this expression? Already we have got this expression by using method of superposition, right? The same thing we are getting by using Castigliano's theorem. Only thing is that you have to, I mean, just you replaced the support by providing the proper support reactions, and then finally you made those things like your delta C and phi C equal to zero. Simply, then once you got R C, you can find out M C also from either equation 1 or equation 2. So, M C will be coming as equation 2 if you find out M C, M C will be coming as P A square L minus A by L square that you can check it from equation 2 say. From equation 1 also you can find out that I mean that is a very simple thing. So, this is your m c value. Can you recognize this? You have got this expression earlier also by using method of superposition. So, this is the way you can apply Castiglione's theorem to solve the indeterminate structure. Now, okay, at this moment you can find out the support reactions for indeterminate structure as well by using method of superposition or using Castiglione's theorem. Okay. Now, I will stop here. So, with this basically I am concluding this course. I hope that you have enjoyed and uh, uh, this course as I told you in the very initial uh, lecture that this course is very, very fundamental and conceptual. So, uh, I mean the understanding of this course will be really helpful okay, for uh, any civil engineer, mechanical engineer or aerospace engineer. And once you know this basic course basically, then based on that actually most of your theories in these engineering fields okay, are established. Thank you very much.